Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, April 28th. I'm Stephanie Haney. I'm here with your top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. As we do each morning, we will kick off with the latest numbers from the Ohio Department of Health on how COVID-19 is impacting us here in Ohio. These numbers are released each day at 2 p.m. So these first numbers are the numbers starting from yesterday at 2 p.m., which I'd like to remind you are based on the expanded CDC definition. So these numbers are not all positive confirmed cases. They are also probable COVID-19 cases here in the state of Ohio. We now have 16,325 reported COVID-19 cases in Ohio and a total of 753 deaths. The age range remains from less than one to 106 years old for people impacted, with that median age being 51. And of these reported cases, 57% are male and 43% are female. Currently, there are 3,232 who have been hospitalized related to COVID-19, and a total of 978 of those people have ended up in the intensive care unit as a result of COVID-19 symptoms. In the U.S. today, we are expected to hit 1 million cases of COVID-19 as of 11 a.m. It was close, but it was not quite there. The U.S. currently has 988,490 reported cases. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. Globally, there have been more than 3 million confirmed cases. So if you break that down, that means that a third of those cases are here in the U.S. Now, there have also been 111,000 recovered COVID-19 cases here in the U.S. alone. So it's important that we also think about that. Some positive news here in Cuyahoga County. 420 people have now been cleared of COVID-19. That's according to Cuyahoga County's latest data out this morning. Dr. Heidi Gullett, the Cuyahoga County Board of Health Medical Director said that that is a cause to celebrate. It definitely is. So Gullett said the team this weekend had a wonderful conversation with someone who had been cleared of COVID-19, who was home and who had the most complicated interventions you could possibly think of in order to keep that person alive. And that person is now alive and at home with her family, and that is something to celebrate. Dr. Gullett wanted to thank all of the ICU partners, the nurses, the technicians, the doctors in the ICUs for helping the community members who are the sickest get through this infection. Now, it is important to note that the World Health Organization did say that there is no evidence that recovered COVID-19 patients are actually immune to a second infection of the virus. So do keep that in mind. If you do happen to have be recovered from COVID-19, it is still important to be practicing that physical distancing, making sure you're doing everything you can to not become reinfected, should that be possible. And that's according to the experts. Today is primary election day. We were supposed to have our primary election day on St. Patrick's Day this year, but it was postponed because According to a public health order, it was not safe for the polls to be open that day. So today is now the day. Yesterday was the last day to postmark your mail-in ballots in order to have your ballot counted in today's election. However, if you do still have a mail-in ballot at home, you are able to drop that off at your county board of elections. Many of them have secure boxes here at Cuyahoga County. They have a secure box in the back where you can drop things off so that it can be contactless. So check in with your local board of elections and see what their procedure is. If you do have a mail-in ballot that you have not yet been able to mail in, again, that would have to be dropped off in person today. So we do know at this point that former Vice President Joe Biden is the presumptive Democratic nominee for presidency for the 2020 election to presumptively run against current President Donald Trump. There are lots of other issues on the ballot. There are school levies, there are local property tax issues, judgeships, local, state, and national candidacies in order to take a look at. So make sure that you're paying attention and you can follow along with us at wkyc.com slash elections. Those results are expected to be in by 7.30 p.m., so we'll be keeping an eye on that. Yesterday, Governor Mike DeWine at his press conference made big news outlining his plan to reopen the state of Ohio. Some people very excited, of course, some people disappointed, and a lot of controversy surrounding one particular issue that was announced yesterday. So here's the breakdown of what Governor Mike DeWine has said the beginning phases of the Ohio reopening plan will look like. All medical procedures that don't require an overnight stay can now be 
begun again. That's starting on May 1st. Non-essential medical procedures have been prohibited in Ohio since March 17th, so that's a big change for the medical industry. Dentists and veterinarians are also allowed to reopen on May 1st. That's this Friday. Now, coming up on May 4th, next Monday, manufacturing, distribution, and construction will be allowed to resume. All employees and clients will be required to follow safety practices, that is including wearing masks, conducting daily health assessment, and a limited capacity of 50% of the business's usual fire code allowance. General office buildings will also be allowed to reopen on May 4th. We'll talk a little bit more specifically about this in just a moment, but companies are being asked to have employees work from home as much as possible. And then starting on May 12th, consumer retail and services will be allowed to reopen. Here's the thing that's getting a lot of discussion generated online. All employees and customers will be required to wear facial coverings once those places are allowed to reopen on May 12th. Now, as for restaurants, gyms, barbershops, salons, those kinds of things, those will currently remain closed. The state wants to check and see how the numbers look as we begin the reopening phases before they make any kind of a determination on that. The state's current stay-at-home stay -at order is, expect, is set to expire on May 1st, so that's Friday, but DeWine said that it will actually officially remain in place. So these are alterations to that broader stay-at-home order, and gatherings of more than 10 people are still prohibited. That is in line with CDC guidelines. Now about those businesses, those general businesses that will be able to open, that's starting on May 4th. DeWine has said that people who can work from home should do it as long as they possibly can. So he said, companies have found out that many of the members of their office can work from home and be just as efficient. We are asking companies to continue to do that as much as humanly possible, continue to have people work from home. Again, we are all in this together and what they do is going to allow us to move forward quicker as far as the opening of Ohio goes. So some of the guidelines that will be put in place for people who do head back to the office on May 4th include ensuring a minimum of six feet, six feet between people, and if that's not possible, installing barriers. This is something that we've seen in grocery stores around Northeast Ohio. People should work from home when possible. Employees must perform daily symptom assessment. This would include things like checking your temperature, requir requir requiring excuse me, employees to stay home if they do show symptoms of COVID-19, and face coverings being worn at all times while working. Now, a word on that mandatory face mask requirement for people who go back to the office on May 4th and also for people and workers of retail establishments that are able to open on May 12th. A lot of people taking issue with this. Some people are saying it's an issue of having control over their own bodies and it should be their choice if they'd like to wear a mask. Other people bringing up the issue of access. You know, there's been difficulty getting masks for some people. There are ways that you can make these facial coverings with materials that you do have around the house. We do have a YouTube video that I put together on WKYC.com on our app and also on our YouTube page where if you have something that is a bandana or the shape of a bandana or something like that, you know, the thicker the fabric, the better, but you can do it with just two hair ties and a bandana. So keep that in mind as people are trying to figure out how they will meet these requirements moving forward. President Donald Trump on a call had suggested that states should consider reopening schools before summer. Many schools across the country have already said it would be unsafe for students to return until the end of summer or the fall. That includes here in Ohio. Governor Mike DeWine has made the decision to keep schools closed through the summer and potentially having some sort of a combination of in-person and distance learning when the fall rolls around. Trump made these comments during a call with governors yesterday. His comments were that it's not a big subject and that young children have done very well in this disaster that we've all gone through. Uh, according to the Associated Press, however, none of the governors on the call reacted to Trump's comments or suggestions. Executive Director of the American Association of School Administrators, Daniel Dominich, responded saying that it would not quite make sense for schools to open for two weeks or three weeks, and this is a quote from him, it's not the right thing to do, particularly when we're involving the safety and welfare of our students. 
Now, as we all look for things to do and look forward to the point where things do reopen, Cedar Point has shared a sneak peek of one of the new attractions that are coming when it does reopen. Cedar Point was supposed to reopen on May 9th for its 150th anniversary season, but that's not happening. That's been postponed. We're not sure when Cedar Point will open. But they did show off a sneak peek of the new Snake River Expedition ride. They still have construction going on that. This is a family-friendly ride that's being added to the park, and there will be live actors mixed in with robotics, animatronics, and a variety of scenes. And the park officials say that you will have interaction the entire way through the ride. So they showed a photo of that, which we have on WKYC.com and on our app. And park officials also said the best thing about the boats that are used in the Snake River Expedition ride is that literally anyone can ride on them. Now, if you want to ride alone, you have to be at least 46 inches tall. But if you're smaller than 46 inches tall, you are able to ride. You just have to sit in the middle of the bench. The park officials said you can bring your baby, your grandma, your grandpa, your aunts, your uncles, literally everybody can ride this ride. So that's something to look forward to when this is all said and done. And if you're really missing out on your America's roller coaster right now, they also shared a virtual POV ride. So you can feel like you're literally in the front row of the Cedar Creek Mine Ride. That's on their YouTube page. We also have that up on WKYC.com and our WKYC app. So make sure you check that out. It's a pretty cool experience. A lot of people have been on that Cedar Creek Mine Ride a lot of times and it'll probably bring back some good feelings and good memories for you if you wanna check that out. All right, those are our headlines for you for this morning for Tuesday, April 28th. Next up, we have Three News Connect. That's with Jay Crawford and our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins. That's at noon. You can catch that on 3 News, also on Facebook and WKYC.com, our WKYC app, and on YouTube. And I will be back here at 2 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers from the Ohio Department of Health. I'll see you there.